Good morning, saints, and welcome to our Sunday morning Bible class. It is good to see you on this 12th Sunday after Pentecost. This morning, saints, we will continue with our study of the Gospel of St. Luke. And in particular, today we'll be looking at Luke chapter 18, verses 31 to 43. Luke 18, 31 to 43. The theme of our lesson this morning, which ends chapter 18, is death and sight. Death and sight. Saints, let's bow our heads in prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for another day of life. We thank you, O oh God, for another week to serve you and for a chance, dear Lord, an opportunity to learn of you, that we may grow in faith and that we may share what we learn with others, that others will be strengthened in faith or others will come to know you and receive eternal life by, why, by believing in your son, Jesus. Dear Lord, you have promised us that you would never leave or forsake us. And so, Lord, now may your Holy Spirit teach us those things which we need to learn. At the same time, dear Lord, I ask that you give me an interp accurate interpretation of your word and also clarity of speech as I lead the class. And we thank you for all those, O oh God, who are joining us this morning those who've been faithful and oh God, please bring more than more and more people, more and more people saying, I mean, Lord, can come to, the, to, to you, dear Lord, and receive eternal life. In your name we pray, oh God, in the name of Jesus, amen. Well, saints, what is chapter 18, verses 31 to 43 about? Well, in our text for this morning, we look at two instances of the Lord Jesus traveling to Jerusalem. The first, he will be discussing his impending death. And the second, although he's on his way to Jerusalem, he continues to do the works of God. He will heal a blind man in the city of Jericho. But in our text, the Lord Jesus begins by predict, predicting his death. Three times previously, he has told his disciples of his impending suffering and death. But the disciples are totally unprepared to accept this chain of events because they have a different view of what will happen to the Messiah. They hear his words but cannot understand. The meaning is hidden from them. The narrative then turns to Jesus on his way approaching Jericho when he runs into a blind man who's sitting by the roadside begging. The blind man hears it is Jesus. He seizes the moment and receives his sight. Amen. So saints, let's take a look now at our text for this morning. We're going to be looking at once again Luke 18 verses 31 to 43. So please Open up your Bibles, and I'll be reading from the New King James Version. First of all, looking at verses 31 to 34, where the Lord Jesus wants again to prepare his disciples, discusses his death, what will happen in Jerusalem. Now remember the disciples have a different view of the Lord. They do believe he's the Messiah, but they believe he will be an earthly Messiah, earthly king who will chase out the Romans and who will, in, who will usher in a new era like David and Solomon, a new great era, earthly era of Israel. But we all know those eras all, all end anyway. So it would be hard for them to understand what the Lord says at this time because they also have not received the Holy Spirit. But the Lord tells them these things so when the time comes, they will remember. Let's begin with verse 31. Then he, Jesus, took the twelve aside, that means his disciples or apostles, and he said to them, Behold, take notice, see, 
we are going up to Jerusalem. And by the way, whenever in the Bible it says going up to Jerusalem, Jerusalem is, of course, on a mountain. I mean, on a mountainous uh, or a terrain up there, a plain. But whenever you went to Jerusalem, you just said going up to Jerusalem, the holy city. And the Lord Jesus said, and all things are written by the prophets, all the prophecies about the suffering and death of the Messiah. He said, written by the prophets concerning the Son of Man or the Messiah will be accomplished. So he is, he's on his way now uh, for his passion. And he's telling them this. So they'll be so when it happens, it will come back to their memories, what he told them. And 32, for he, meaning speaking of himself, will be delivered to the Gentiles. The Jewish leaders would give him over to the Romans and he will be mocked and insulted and spit upon. 33, and they will scourge him and put him to death. And the third day he will rise again. So here we see the Lord confirming what's about to happen to him. He will be delivered to the Romans. He will be mocked. He will be insulted. He will be spit upon. He will be scourged, put to death. But on the third day, on Easter Sunday, he will rise from the dead. Now, 34 gives their reaction to what the Lord does told them, which to them was just inconceivable and they the apostles or disciples understood none of these things the reason why they focused so much on the glory of Christ that he would be a new David or Solomon and that they would reign with him that the very thought of suffering was something they could not even consider it says they understood none of these things. This saying was hidden from them, and they did not know the things that were spoken. It was hidden from them. They were so firmly believed that the Messiah would be a conquering leader and that he would set up an earthly kingdom, so much so that the thought of the real mission of the Lord to save the world from its sins, all the people of the world, was just to them beyond their comprehension. So here we see the uh, fourth time the Lord Jesus mentions it to them. And when we get to our, um, our lessons, we'll learn how we can apply all this to us too. Now, let's turn now to our remaining verses. Verses 35 to 43, the Lord Jesus now has spoken with his disciples or apostles. He's told them about his death. They have not understood. And now he's on his way to, Jer to Jericho. And he's going as he, as he gets to Jericho, as he's coming into the city, he runs into a blind man. Uh, let's turn to our text again, verses 35 through 43. Verse 35. And it came to pass that as he was coming near Jericho, we all remember Jericho. Jericho at this time was still a military city and it was a custom center for taxes. And it was on the main road leading to Jerusalem. A certain blind man sat by the road begging. Now this blind man had to sit there begging because he had to live. He was blind and poor, and there was no medical help available for him. People tended to ignore their obligation to help him, as listed in Leviticus 25, verses 35 to 38, but they ignored it. No one helped him. So he had to make a living for himself. He had to contact as many people as possible, and he could do so on the road to Jerusalem there at Jericho. He could also make a living. Verse 36, and hearing the multitude passing by, hearing all these people that are with Jesus, 
he asked what it meant. And 37, and they told him that Jesus of Nazareth was passing by. He had heard of Jesus. He knew of what Jesus had done with others. And he would now demonstrate his faith. And he cried out, verse 38, the blind man saying, Jesus, son of David, O promised Messiah, have mercy on me. His faith looked to Jesus to heal him. He believed in this. He had firm conviction in this. And 39, and those who went before warned him that he should be quiet. They regarded him as a nuisance and they told him to shut up. But he cried out all the more, Son of David or Messiah, have mercy on me. He was undaunted by their rebukes. He believed Jesus could heal him and he was not going to let anyone stop him from receiving his blessing. And verse 40, and Jesus stood still. Here we see the Lord's compassion and tenderness for distressed people. And commanded him, the blind man, to be brought to him. And when he had come near, Jesus asked him, through 41, saying, What do you want me to do for you? Now, by the way, the Lord knows what the man wants. The man is blind. He knows what the man wants, but he wants the man to ask for it. We have to remember that, too. The Lord knows everything we need but he wants us to call upon him. So we'll know he provided it. And the man said, and he said, Lord, notice how he does not call Jesus Rabboni. He does not call him rabbi, teacher. He calls him Lord. He demonstrates his faith. I want to receive my, my sight. It is a confession of faith that Jesus was the Messiah of God. And as the Messiah, he can heal or do whatever he wants. This was his prayer to Jesus in 42. And Jesus said to him, receive your sight. Your faith has saved you. This shows the depth of the Lord's sympathy. We receive from God based upon our faith. We receive from God as long as what we ask is in connection with his promises found in his word. Now, sometimes we don't get it right away. In this case, this blind man got it right away. And 43, and immediately he received his sight and he followed him. Okay, he acknowledged God's free gift of grace and now would dedicate his life to serving the Lord. And it said he followed glorifying God. He blessed God and all the people when they saw it gave praise to God. The man acknowledged God's grace to him and others began to do it. For we should all give praise to God for what he has done for others as well as for ourselves. So in this text, we see these two stories and what can we learn from them? Well, first of all, saints, when we look at uh, the disciples not understanding what the Lord was telling them about his true mission, the first lesson is that human reasoning cannot comprehend the things of God. Does everyone understand that or hear that? Human reasoning cannot comprehend the things of God. When the Lord Jesus told his disciples of his impending death and resurrection, they were baffled. They couldn't grasp it. They couldn't understand how the Messiah could be killed in Jerusalem the place where he would be enthroned. And also he's going to be a conquering hero, not a dead carpenter from Palestine. And they would need the Holy, pardon me, from Galilee. And they would need the Holy Spirit, however, to provide full clarity. The Holy Spirit, when it came, it, these things would come back to him, come back to them and they would understand. The first lesson tells us human reasoning cannot comprehend the things of God. It is closed from us only when the Holy Spirit is active in us. As we study the word of God, as we take of the Lord's Supper, as we remember our baptism, all these things keep us on the right road with God. So that's the first lesson. Human reasoning cannot comprehend the things of God. The second, our faith teaches us that life and death are inseparable 
And, and that's what we see in our first verses. You see, the Lord Jesus' death was necessary. It had a unique purpose. God himself in Christ was willingly giving his son and his son was giving his life so that we could have uh, access to the abundant life here on earth and eternal life with God in heaven. And so therefore, and we do ourselves have to inherit, no, we do also have to die to inherit the gifts that the Lord uh, gave us through his death and resurrection. To receive this access to the abundant and eternal life, we have to die. Through death, we become what God had in mind for us all forever, always, forever and ever, that we be like him and with him. So that's our second lesson. Our faith teaches us that life and death are inseparable. The Lord Jesus had to die that we would have life. And we have to die to inherit that life. Amen. Number three, the time is now to call upon the Lord for all of our needs. And this goes back to the blind man, doesn't it? Who wouldn't quit? The blind man, our study, sees the moment and called upon the Lord Jesus to give him sight. With this man's verbal proclamation of faith in Jesus and in his ability to restore sight, Jesus healed him instantly. Jesus is passing by right now in our lives. This is the moment to call upon him and receive the blessings while we receive the blessings he has for our lives. If we don't seize it, we may miss something extraordinary. Isn't that wonderful? So saints, remember, it's very important that we call upon the name of the Lord and don't quit. The next lesson, we only receive sight when we acknowledge our blindness. Some people will never believe in God because they don't believe they're sinners. They don't believe they need God. Only the Holy Spirit can get us to see uh, who we really are and why we are the way we are. You see, the healing of the blind man serves as a spiritual lesson to all, of, to all who are unchurched all those who don't know Christ. You see, if they would respond to Christ and acknowledge their spiritual blindness, God would grant them spiritual life and entrance into the eternal kingdom that our Lord is setting up. We only receive sight when we acknowledge our blindness. So saints, we have to know we need God to receive the blessing of knowing God. Amen. Our fifth lesson, no matter how desperate your situation may seem, Jesus will help you. Remember that of the blind man again. Blind beggars had little hope of escaping their degrading way of life. But this bland, blind man took hope in Christ. He shamelessly cried out for Jesus' attention, and Jesus said that his faith allowed him to see. So saints always remember, no matter how desperate your circumstances may seem, if you call upon the Lord, he will help you. Amen. That's God's promise. I am with you always. Call upon me in the day of trouble and I will help you. And our final lesson, praise God when you've received your blessing. You know, sometimes we receive what we've asked of God. We just go off our business, off, go off and do other things and forget what the Lord has done for us. Well, saints, as soon as the blind man regained his sight, he became a disciple of God. It said he followed Jesus. And he followed Jesus doing something, glorifying God. That's an example for us. Let us follow Jesus and glorify God for all that God has done for us. You see, this is the only appropriate response to the work of God in our lives. As a result, the people who witnessed it gave praise to God as well. So in other words, we're the best witnesses of God, and we witness best by God about, we, we, pardon me, we witness best about Jesus by the way we live. So saints, these are our Bible, these are our Bible study for today. These are the lessons uh, that uh, we have for you. 
I pray that this has been a good lesson for you. Next week, we'll move on to Luke chapter 19, and we'll just keep studying, keep believing. Remember, God is with you. He'll take care of you. He will never leave or forsake you. So God bless you and see you in a moment for our sermon for this Sunday. God bless.